Hi, and welcome to this AI Solutions Free Flyer tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a Free Flyer mission plan that will allow you to compute visibility times for the International Space Station from your location on the ground. So let's get started. We're working in Free Flyer 7.3 today, and we've gone ahead and opened up a new nanosecond mode mission plan, and we've named it ISS Tracker. The first step we'll do is to go under the Object Browser. We're going to click Add and Spacecraft. And this will let us add in the spacecraft that we'll use for the International Space Station. I'm going to double click on that, and this will bring up the object browser for the spacecraft. So let's go ahead and rename it to ISS. And to propagate the ISS, we're going to use a TLE that we download from the internet. And when we propagate TLEs in FreeFlyer, we need to use a very specific propagator. So what I'm going to do is come over to the Propagator tab, and I'm going to select the NORAD propagator, which is the propagator that's included off the shelf with FreeFlyer that is specifically for propagating TLEs. I'm going to change the step, step size to 60 seconds and click OK. The next thing we'll do is go and add a ground station in FreeFlyer. And this will bring up our ground station. We'll double click on that. And let's rename that to My Location. This is how we will be representing our location on the ground. By default, we have a ground station located in Cape Canaveral, Florida with the given latitude, longitude, and height above sea level. Feel free to change that if you wish using your local latitude and longitude. And we also have a 10 degree elevation mask by default. Feel free to change that as well. Okay, now that we've created our ground station and spacecraft objects, it's time to actually populate the mission sequence with what we would like to do. And what we want to do is compute the access times from my location on the ground to the spacecraft object and we're going to propagate the spacecraft for a period of 48 hours and use the pass data method in FreeFlyer to generate a contact report. We're actually going to do this mission sequence entirely in freeform script, and we're going to do it all in one block of script. So I'm going to come over here to my script elements tab, and I'm going to drag a freeform block over. Double click on that, and we can start scripting. The first thing we need to do is actually load in the TLE for the ISS. I've already downloaded it from spacetrack.org. Here's what it looks like. It has the name of the spacecraft on the first line, and then lines two and three actually give the orbital information of the spacecraft. You'll need to copy and paste that information from online into a simple text editor and save it. I've saved it as ISS underscore TLE, and that's all we need to do for that. Now, Back in FreeFlyer, we're going to use the load NORAD TLE command to load in that TLE and define the spacecraft state of the ISS. So we'll say ISS.load NORAD TLE and we'll give it the name ISS underscore TLE dot text. And for indexing purposes, we want to use the first entry in that TLE. And since there's only one entry, that makes it really simple. Indexes start at zero, so we're going to give it the number zero here. And that's all we need to do. It's a one-line command that will load in a TLE and populate to the spacecraft object. Next, let's go ahead and build our propagation loop. So we'll start with a while statement, and we want to propagate the ISS for a period of two days. So we'll say while ISS elapsed time is less than a time span of two days, we can essentially read it and understand what's happening. So while ISS elapsed time is less than a time span of two days, then do something. And in this case, we want to step the spacecraft and we want to view some output. So we'll use the view command to create a simple 3D output window. We want to view the ISS as well as my location on the ground. Okay, now let's call the pass data command to generate that access report. So we'll say report ISS pass data and give it the argument of the ground station, my location. And where do we want to report that to? Let's send it to a text file. We'll call it ISS contact times dot text. And that should be good. That should give us a simple mission plan that will load in the TLE for the ISS, propagate it for two days, 
visualize both the space station and our location on the ground and then report this contact information back out to a text file. So we'll give it a syntax check, that looks good. We'll go ahead and click run and take a look at the results. Now what you see here is a typical output window in FreeFlyer with a body fixed 3D view of the earth and you can see the satellite and the ground station. We can also change this to a 2D map if we want and zoom in, pan around different locations. We can also go back to an inertial view uh, if we like that a bit better. Okay, and we finished running. And you also don't even have to look at graphical output. If you just want the numbers to be run, I can go ahead and press play again to run this one more time. I can just simply exit out of the view window and see it immediately completed. If FreeFlyer doesn't have to render any graphics, you can get your actual computations done much faster. So that's the option to you as a user. So let's go back and let's see what report was created. Going back to my desktop, I see ISS contact times. So let's click on that. And here is the report that was generated from that mission plan. So now taking a look at this report, the highlighted area here represents one individual pass of ISS over our location on the ground. And if we scroll through the entire report, we will count up eight passes that were recorded over that 48 hour period. So each one of these contains a good amount of information. The first two lines represent a summary where we have acquisition of signal, loss of signal times, the duration in minutes, and the maximum elevation of the ISS overhead. And then below that contains the more detailed information of data recorded at every time step. Okay, so this gives us a good amount of information here to know when we could walk into our backyard and look up in the night sky and see the space station. But we've left out one crucial piece of information, which you may have realized by now, and that is that we did not incorporate any logic into FreeFlyer to report out when it is actually nighttime. So some of these passes may be during the day, in which case this information is kind of useless. So let's go back and redo our mission plan, add a few lines of script in to tell FreeFlyer that we only want to report out the, this information when it is nighttime at our location. So now let's go back to our control screen and to our block of freeform script. We're not going to change anything that we've scripted thus far, we're just going to add to it. FreeFlyer is a great tool for adding conditional logic into certain scenarios and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're going to call on the visibility segment object which will allow you to create a line of sight between any two objects in FreeFlyer. And in this case, we will use that information to report the pass data command only when those lines of sight are true or false. So let's go ahead and create a visibility segment. And we'll call it me to ISS. This will be a vector essentially from our location on the ground to the ISS. Okay, and I'll create one more. We'll use two in this case. Second one we'll name ISS to sun. And that will be, as the name implies, a vector from the ISS to the sun. Now let's define what each one of these visibility segments will be. When we define the visibility segment object, we need to specify an observer and a target, and then any occulting bodies that may be present. So for the first one, we will say me to ISS, set observer to be my location. Then we will say set the target as ISS. Okay, so we've set the observer and the target, and now we want to know if there are any occulting bodies that may disrupt that line of sight. In this case, uh, it will be quite obviously the Earth. Me to ISS, and we'll click Add Occulting Body, and specify the Earth. So when the ISS goes below the horizon, we now know that that line of sight is no longer present. Okay, now for ISS to Sun, we will do the same thing. Set Observer to be the ISS now, in this case. And we will set the, whoops, set the target to be the Sun. And we will also add an occulting body, also the Earth. So whenever the Sun goes behind 
the Earth relative to the point of view of the ISS, that is no that visibility chain is no longer complete. That's all we need to do to define those two visibility segments. Now let's go down here into our while loop and call them. So we still want to step the ISS at every time step. We still want to view the ISS and our ground station at every time step. But what we don't want to do every time step is report out this fast data command. So we're going to add another loop inside here, in this case an if loop. And we're going to call those two visibility segments in such a way that we only report out the past data command when our location on the ground can see the ISS and when the ISS cannot see the sun. So we want the visibility segment me to ISS to be true while simultaneously having the visibility segment ISS to sun be false. So we're going to say if me to ISS visibility and we need to specify epochs here to make sure we're dealing with the same moments in time. So if the visibility segment meets to ISS at this particular epoch is true, and ISS to sun dot visibility at the same epoch. is false, then and only then do we want to report out this past data location. So this is exactly what we needed to put in in order to filter out those times where the past data command would generate reports during the day. And we'll close off our if statement and we should be good. This should be all that's required to trim down the report that will now be generated and it will weed out all the times that the ISS passes overhead during the day. So let's syntax check one more time. We'll run it again. And just to speed up computations a bit, we can go ahead and close out the view window here. Okay, mission plan executed successfully, that's good. Let's go back over here to ISS contact times. And now, instead of eight different reports, we have one, two, three, four. So we can see that by adding in that, those extra few lines of script and using the visibility segments to implement conditional logic in FreeFlyer to rule out daytime passes, we've now reduced our report from eight passes down to four. And these will only be at local nighttime at our location. So this is just one example of how you could do this. As with most things in FreeFlyer, there's usually more than one way to approach any given problem. What we've shown here is just one example out of several. You could approach this a number of different ways. We encourage you to use this as a starting point and try out some more advanced things and let us know what you come up with. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.